Brains are simply not needed when writing a story about a zombie apocalypse. The zombie plague has spread throughout pop culture, gradually infecting all works until everything is but a mindless swarm of all-consuming... Uh, huh. Can't really think of a good comparison. Regardless, zombies are an excuse to print money, and zombie stories are so well tread by this point that anyone can write one. But why go it alone? Team up with terrible writing advice as we face down the ravenous flesh eaters and write our very own zombie apocalypse. Before a writer does something foolish, like imagine a central character story arc, choose a good central theme, or dig down into what makes zombies scary, the authors should first make a much more important decision. Running zombies or slow zombies? Pick carefully because this issue is weirdly contentious among fans. Just kidding. Zombies are at their best when you just lump on more and more crazy abilities and keep changing the rules, much like their origin story. We could keep the zombie origin story consistent with clues regarding their creation seated throughout the plot in a compelling mystery. Or we could just leave it an unanswered question and instead devote resources to more relevant plot lines. But a faster way is to introduce a stock zombie origin and have this revelation eat up a good chunk of the plot while going nowhere. Ah, much better, because we don't want the audience using their brains or they might get smart enough to see how dumb my zombies are. You see, my zombies are not like normal zombies. They can mutate into a whole bunch of different forms. Oh wait, now they have a weak point that can be hit for massive damage. Wait, now they don't have a weak point, but the characters have to use magic to defeat them. I've changed my mind. It's headshot classic, but like they can jog but not run. Zombies work best when the writers keep changing the rules every five seconds. Internal consistency just gets in the way of my creativity. Regardless of what powers the zombies have, they will also need a thick layer of plot armor, especially if they are zombie default. Zombies are very dangerous with their slow movement speed, loud moans that give away their position, slow reflexes, no anti-armor or anti-air capability, short-range communication, limited communication, limited coordination, inability to use vehicles, inability to use even the most rudimentary tactics or strategy, no capacity to avoid hazardous weather, susceptibility to to the elements, and the fact that they can't even use a freaking door. Clearly zombies are the height of apex predators. I guess they are smart enough to use air vents for some reason. Darn air vents, always full of zombies or aliens or spies or zombie alien spies. But hey, if we can't live zombies up, then the next best thing is to bring the humans down. Make the humans so stupid that they don't even notice the zombies sneaking up on them. Have the survivors use actual tactics like routing zombies through a choke point. <laughs> no, they will simply stand out in the open and get overrun. If a writer worries that a group of survivors is too cohesive, then add an obviously incompetent member who the group just puts up with for some reason, even though he gets everyone killed one at a time. Oh no, someone got bitten. They better hide it. Fortunately, no one will think to routinely check the group for bites until it's too late. If they do find a bite victim, then everyone must angst over whether to shoot the bite victim rather than just locking them in a room to see if they turn. In fact, the survivors should always choose to revel in anguish rather than use creative problem solving when confronted with critical situations. It's not like they are in an environment that would hone those skills. What about the military? They are either already dead by the story's beginning, or they will spend their time killing survivors in a vain attempt to contain the outbreak. Why secure and quarantine when you can shoot at and drive off potential disease vectors? Besides, no one would like to read an in-depth exploration of how various government military institutions failed to contain the outbreak. That would be boring compared to zombies attacking the product placement. What about the setting? It's not a zombie apocalypse without the apocalypse. It's every man for himself, even though it's been like five minutes since the outbreak started. If it's one thing cable news taught me, it's that humans will turn on one another the moment it looks like the world will end, or even if it doesn't. Another important thing to remember is that the story needs to be set in an alternate universe where zombie stories don't exist, otherwise everyone will know what to do and they won't panic. But where will the action take place? Why not try one of the many zombie story stock settings? All the classic hits like convenience stores, suburbia, the abandoned house in the woods, or the streets of downtown. If you set your zombie story in a mall, then get an extra critique on capitalistic consumerism for free. Act now. 
Don't worry about poor lighting or lack of running water. The lights and plumbing are always on, even if society isn't. I guess that would also explain why the survivors are wearing nice clothes, still have good hygiene, and have full makeup. Got to look your best for the end of the world. Besides, I want the end of the world to be nice and clean with a satirical edge. Oh wait, I want everything to be hopelessly dark, gritty, and deconstructionist. Eh, I can't decide, so instead I think I'll have the tone pointlessly flail all over the place. Just be careful, the worst thing that could happen is the changing tone might create effective and meaningful contrast. We want to avoid that just as much as we want to avoid keeping the tone consistent. A writer should keep the audience off kilter at all times, so I can spring my stealth zombie jump scares on the main characters at the most dumb moments possible. Why worry about things like tone or characterization in a zombie story? Zombies are enough to float a story all on their own. This is why writers should always strive to keep zombie stories low quality. That way, we can all keep making money with zero effort. This means never digging down into the core fear that zombies represent. The slow, inexorable march of death and disease that can't be escaped no matter how fast you run. Of how in the end we all die, and shambling towards us is a grim reminder of that ultimate fate personified as an endless horde of walking corpses. Death changes us into that, taking away all that we are and leaving behind something that looks like us, but is not us. Our individuality robbed and replaced with a legacy of endless hunger, pain, mindlessness, and death. We ward off disease and death with our technology, but it merely buys us time until finally the teeth sink in, horrible pain follows, and then darkness takes us. Thank goodness I saved at the last checkpoint.